By 1950, Hayek's market economics were so completely out of fashion that when he sought a full-time academic job in the United States, only one university was willing to hire him. Chicago has always been an exceptional place out of the mainstream. Chicago is geographically isolated. This affects Chicago's intellectual influence in many more areas than economics. The University of Chicago's intellectual influence would grow. Eight professors and another 11 economists from Chicago went on to win Nobel Prizes. Gary Becker is one of them. When I came as a graduate student to Chicago in 1951, I was flabbergasted by how stimulating the atmosphere was. I had been a very good student at Princeton my first day in Friedman's class. He raised a question, I answered, he said, that's no answer, that's just rephrasing the question. That, the that was the example of how blunt people were. Nobody was very polite. And people were interested in ideas and argument, and not in making sure you didn't uh, uh, ruffle anybody's feathers. If you're sitting in a seminar room, and somebody up there is saying something, which if imbibed by your students who are sitting in that same room, is going to lead them astray, it's up to you to call that guy right now, you see, and not later. And that, I think, is sort of the spirit that prevailed in the Chicago workshop system. There wasn't that much fighting in the lunches. They were pretty cordial. <laughs> lunches at the Quadrangle Club were famous for the intensity of intellectual discussion. And one man came to dominate those debates. Somehow Milton managed to set the agenda of argument. And so there was a saying, everybody loves to argue with Milton, particularly when he isn't there, because he's a good arguer. Milton Friedman was becoming the most articulate spokesman for the so-called Chicago School of Economics. The Chicago School meant was a strong belief in minimal government and an emphasis on free market as a way to control the economy. You know, in many ways, Milton Friedman was a devil figure uh, in uh, my youth in a Keynesian household of economists uh, because he seemed, with his emphasis on individualism, freedom, and markets, to be so unconcerned with fairness. Liberals may have loathed the Chicago School, but Hayek felt on home ground in an intellectual atmosphere so like the Vienna of his youth. Our vision is that the forces of the market are just that. They are forces. They are like the wind and the tides. If you want to try to ignore them, you ignore them at your peril. If you find a way of ordering your life, which harnesses these forces to the benefit of your society, that's the way to go. But in Washington, Keynes was still king of the hill. 19 years after he died, his face was on the cover of Time magazine. Keynes's influence on economics at mid-century can't be exaggerated. The economic advice that economists gave to policymakers said the only reason you have bad economic outcomes is because the government's not doing enough. It sounds almost like central planning, doesn't it? Washington's Keynesians saw the economy not as a force of nature, but a sophisticated machine to be fine-tuned by technocrats like themselves. <laughs> 